Hello, this is Dr. Ankur Gupta again from RegularCrisis.com and we are in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Daily new things are coming regarding this virus, whether it's the treatment part or whether it's the diagnostic part. In that series only, we'll be discussing a few interesting points regarding the newer RT-PCR report of this COVID-19 virus. So basically, what is RT-PCR? RT-PCR is the reverse transcription of RNA into the DNA and then amplification of these specific DNA targets by using polymerase chain reaction. So in simplified ways, we can see it measures the amount of specific RNA in that particular sample. So earlier the reports used to come like this, COVID-19 virus positive, COVID-19 virus negative. So it was very simple to understand whether you are COVID positive or you are COVID negative. But nowadays it along with positive and negative, we get two more values. One is this alphabetical value and the other is numerical value. Here also you can see this is alphabetical value and this is the numerical value. And what is this CT value mentioned here? We'll see these each step by step. And to understand these reports, you need to have some basic idea about the genes present on the COVID-19 virus. Currently, they, we know in detail about the six genes and they are being discovered on daily basis. So these are S stands for spike, N stands for nucleocapsid, M stands for membrane and E stands for envelope. And two more are ORF1 AB, which is very specific for COVID-19 virus. And recently they have discovered ORF8, which is very, very specific for COVID-19 virus. And RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So these are the genes present on the COVID-19 virus like this. You can see this is the membrane protein, nucleocapsid protein, spike protein, envelope protein, and target regions are ORF1A, ORFAB and RDRP. So this is a basic structure of the COVID-19 virus. Why this is important? Now you will understand that different countries are testing the different genes in their labs. China has utilized ORF1AB and N. United States have tested the three targets on the N protein. Germany, RDRP, E and N. In this particular lab, they have tested the ORF gene and the N gene. So now you understand that these are the genes which are present on the COVID-19 virus, which that particular lab has tested. So one thing we have seen, now we'll see what is the CT value and what are these numbers. So what does this CT mean? The CT stands for cycle threshold. So what is the cycle threshold? Earlier we have seen that in RT-PCR, what they do is that reverse transcribe RNA into the DNA and then they amplify the DNA particles. Whenever they amplify, it is detected by accumulation of a fluorescent signal. And when this particular fluorescent signal crosses a particular threshold level, the test is considered as positive. And if it doesn't cross the th threshold level, it, the test is considered negative. So you see here, this is the threshold value. This is the threshold level. And the DNA samples are getting amplified, amplified, amplified. And here it crosses the threshold value. Now, 21 cycles, this, these are the cycles, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 40. Now here, 21 cycles are required for this amplification to cross the threshold value. Here in 21 cycle, it has caused the threshold value, so it is strongly positive. And here it requires 39 cycles to cross the threshold value, that means it's a weakly positive. Which means, CT levels are inversely proportional to amount of target nucleic acid present in the sample. So it's quite obvious that if more number of particles are present in that particular sample, the less number of cycles will be required to amplify. And if less number of viral particles are present in that particular sample, the more number of cycles are required to cross that particular threshold. So that's why if the CT cycles are less than 29, means less than 29 cycles are required to cross the threshold, it is considered as strong positive. If 38 to 40 cycles are required, it is weakly positive. And in between 30 to 37, it's moderate. So now we know that the less number of CT cycles, the more is the viral load, more number of CT cycles, less is the viral load. It is written on the reports nowadays also. Cycle threshold value is defined as the number of cycles required for the fluorescent signal to cross the threshold. Lower the CT value, higher is the viral load. So now we again look at these reports. Now we clearly understand that this report is positive. The lab has detected these two genes in particular sample and the cycles required to cross the threshold is 27.7 cycles or 28.98 cycles. Now we compare this one. This is also positive. They have detected a RF gene and the N gene but the cycles required are less 17.95 and 20.21. That means the viral load in this patient was high. Here it is positive 
n1 and n2 genes are detected but the cycles required are 32.2 and 32.36 means the viral load is little bit less here the report is negative they were not able to identify any of the genes but one very important thing this does not correlate with the disease severity or alters the management of the patient so viral load detection in this rt pcr report has nothing to do with the disease severity your patient may have a low viral load but can be sick because due to comorbid condition or late presentations or your report can be negative but the patient has presented late and now has become negative but the lung fibrosis is there so this values doesn't correlate with the disease severity they just give an idea of the viral load present in that particular patient you can use them to monitor your disease process suppose you have done an rt pcr on day 1 and you have done an rt pcr on day 9 both came positive but if the viral load is decreasing you are happy at least the viral load is getting down and the patient will become negative sooner or later so i hope this small info will make your reading covid 19 reports a little bit more interesting in coming days so see you next time do subscribe to regular classes channel take care <laughs>